position yourself to take 30 trees this year. Get your writing material. My chief usher, I don't know how your writing material has not finished. I know you with one diary. Since about two years ago, have you? Coup d'etat. Okay, man, change it. <laughs> it is well. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, this, this message note is for 2019. There are messages I prepared that I didn't preach. You know, at times, when I'm less busy, God puts something in my heart, I'll just prepare them down and leave it. So when I was trusting God, God said, it was, I think it was last week or so, I just, I didn't know. I just picked up this diary and I saw some of the things that I used. And this one is for today. So this is 2019. I have used about full of this, not less than four or five. So please, make sure that that note finish this year. That diary must finish this year. <laughs> Even if you are going to write to write that notes. <laughs> or you give it to your children here. It must finish this year. Maybe I'll begin to examine our notes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So get prepared. Uh, this year is going to be great for us. In the name of Jesus. You know, God told us we are going to be marvelously helped. So I told you, you have to drink drinks. So when we talk about taking territory, let's take the scriptures in the Joshua chapter 6, from verse 1 to 7. Position yourself to take 33 this year. You know, in the layman's language, 33 is a, a 33 is a geographical location. That's the layman's language. They are Agbibilante, so it's a, it's a geographical location in a layman's language. Okay, let's read the scripture after the count of three. Can we read together? Seven verses. One, two, and three. Let's go. Now, Jericho. I'm the only one reading. reading. Let's go. One, two, and let's go. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Verse 2, we stop at verse 7. Hallelujah. Wherever is the fast? Verse 2. Verse 2. Don't let us do this this year. Verse 2, let's go. And, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its kings, and the mighty men of valor. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Verse 3, let's go. You shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Verse 4, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpet. Verse 5. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the rams on, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Verse 6. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said to them, Fake up the ark of the covenant, and seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. Let's stop in verse 7. After verse 7, let's go. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. Father, we ask that you speak to our minds. Everyone we hold with at least the message from you that will keep us on fire till we take territories in Jesus' name. Now listen, I told you that in the Nathan's language, taking territory is possessing geographical locations. But listen, this message is not all about taking geographical locations alone. This message is talking about advancing. 
that when we talk about taking territories, we are talking about you advancing into to new positions. Now, for instance, you advancing into to new levels, taking the territory. You advancing into new assignment. It's part of taking territory. You advancing into new progress. Are you getting it? It's part of taking territory. Now, taking territory could be moving from single to being married this year. It could be from moving from, from a, 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 a childlessness to having children this year. It could be moving from one level of finance to another. It could also be moving from one level of spirituality to another. Now, the central word that should cut everything together is that you must make up your mind and position yourself this year to advance. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must make up your mind. Position yourself that this year you are going to advance. That's the plan of God. In fact, the key part of this message I'll be taking in the second service. And in the second service, the way I tie to it is different. Because in the second service, we are going to make sure that I want to teach them on you must not suffer. You must not suffer loss of any kind. We want to deal with setbacks. So God wants us to take territories. Now, those of you that are business owners, God wants your customers and your reach to increase. Say amen to that. Yes. Now, this new season, this new year, you must not remain where you are. You must not suffer loss of any kind. There must be advancement in your life. And we saw where we have just read. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Joshua and said to Joshua, the city of Jericho, I have given to you. Not that I will give. God is saying, I have given to you. So let's take our first lesson. God gives territories first by prophecies. God gives territories first by prophecies. Which means whatever God wants to give you, He first prophesies it. He first puts into prophecy whatever He wants to give you. So God's number one way of allocating His plan is to first say it before He does it. That's how God moves. He first say before He will do. That's why we call Him the name the God that speaks and does. You know, nobody can ask him. When he's whatever he does not want to do, he will not speak. But when he speaks it, he does it. Hallelujah. Please, on, online they are complaining about the sound, 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 sound. Somebody's complaining and saying, Fekka, please, work on the sound, sound. They want to hear clearly. Because uh, uh, in the in commission acts, they will tell you that the greatest a reason for communication is understanding. So whatever you, you are communicating that the people does not understand is useless. So please check your sound, make sure that the sound is perfect. So let's go again. God first gives 33 by prophecy. That's why you see that God said to Joshua, I have given you. Now as at the time that God is saying, I have given you, they have not given, they have not taken physical possession. Now, that's why you know, when we came across overnight, stop any part of the year, I kept telling you, come on, go, enter into the year of marvelous hell. That's how God first does his things. He first allocate by prophecy. That's why I pray. Every prophecy your ears have heard, hear me, your eyes will receive the manifestation and you partake in enjoying them. This, that's why I wrote here, that's why he expects man that the moment man as head prophecy, man should begin to take steps in order to get such prophecies fulfilled. After you have heard prophecies, God soon is to prophesy. And once he prophesies, he has made a re available arrangement. He has made available arrangement. It is now you that should now begin to position yourself. I'm going to teach you how to position yourself in this service. Now, let me quickly show you why you need to position yourself. You position yourself because there are forces that don't want you to enter into the realm of prophecies your ears have heard. Why do you need to position yourself? Because there are forces. That's why as a child of God, you must understand that there are powers, there are forces that doesn't want you to enter into the prophecies that your ears have heard. So how do you position yourself? Number one, you position yourself by engaging in spiritual warfare. You position yourself by engaging in spiritual warfare. I want prophecy. Now all those words of God you have read and you want to see come to pass in your life. What do you do to bring them to pass in your life? You involve in prayers, spiritual warfare. 
Now, let me show you. Let's go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, from verse 13 to verse 17. Acts chapter 19, from verse 13 to verse 17. What do you do after you have heard prophecies? Number one is that you engage in warfare. You engage in warfare. Yes, now, thank you, Technica. They uh, the, the are said perfect. The sound is okay now. Thank you, thank you. God bless you guys. You are doing great work. Show us Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, 13 to 17. How do you... Now, look at it. Then some of the... Uh, uh, Internet Jews, escort, sorry, es, help me, <laughs> my tongue, esrosis, took it up upon themselves to call the name of Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Leave that one and continue. English is not my father's language. Saying, we what? Exorcis. Exorcise. We exorcise. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. That's which means we have come now to demonstrate the authority saying that we are talking about the Jesus which Paul preached. Also, there were seven sons of Skipha, a Jewish priest, who did so. What were they doing? They were always going around. They were always going around. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? I know Jesus. I know, Paul, you want to do spiritual warfare, but I don't know you. Who are you? Now, those forces were challenging them. Listen, for every battle, uh, level you want to enter, there are forces at the other side that doesn't want you to enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? I know the battles I fought before I became a parent. I know the battle I fought before I got married. I know the battle I fought before I got to this point. Any child of God that wants to possess, hear me, manifestations of prophecy must be a war warfare Christian. No? Because the, there are forces that doesn't want you to enter into the plan and purpose of God for your life. That's why I want to teach you today, as children of God, how to build spiritual muscles. Now, let's read on. So these people were doing what Paul was doing. They thought it's just a matter of a... Uh, F -A mouth, power in the name of Jesus Christ, our poor preach. Ah, what you bear, Lord? Do you know that there are some families that they don't want them to graduate? They don't want them to even graduate at all. There are some families that it's not that uh, the normal thing you just do jam, you pass jam, you get into school. There are some families that have spiritual issues. That even after you must have passed jam, you need to do strange spiritual warfare to be able to cross into university. I'm telling you what is happening. Now, and if you look at the scripture we have read, it has established that there are forces. Now, the force inside the man they were trying to cast out said to him, we know Jesus. We know Paul. Who are you? Show us the scripture. Show us that scripture. Who are you? Tell him, go. What are you trying to say? Who are you? Who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and did what? And overcame them. And prevailed against them. So that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. The man gave them a beating. And it was not the man who, it was a spirit inside the man. That did not want the man to be delivered. That attacked those that were just calling the name of Jesus. Who did not have any spiritual reputation at all. So beloved, hear me. To enter into the prophecies that your ears have heard which I call taking territories, you need to be involved in spiritual warfare. Let's see more. Let's look at one more scripture. Psalm 24, verse 7 to verse 10. Psalm 24, verse 7 to verse 10. So these people could not cast out that spirit because the demon did not respond to them. The demon said, I don't know you. And he waits spiritually. So they have to leave that man's case like that. Now look at this one. Now the Bible says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come right in, shall come in. Verse 8, who is the king of glory? Now look at the spirit behind that door said, wait, the king of glory you are saying should come in. I should lift up the gate just like that. 
Who is this king of glory? Now that's where several Christians fail. We are praying. Uluwa jo, she invest for me. Uluwa jo, yekin deni bega. Uluwa jo, yekin riche. Uluwa jo, uluwa jo. And you are praying. The spirits that is behind the delay will be asking, asking, who are you? You know, I ask my children. I, I used to tell them that there is a level that my own prayer will carry you. I always tell them, you better learn how to pray. I always tell them, you better learn how to fast. I always tell them, you better study scriptures on your own. Every man's battle is different. The battle that will face the husband is different from the battle that will face the, face the wife. And for every battle, listen, the spirit behind the battle will always ask you, who are you? So the spirit asked him, who, is, who do you want us to open the gate for? And they said, he's the king of glory. The spirit said, who is the king of glory? That was the question. And the answer came, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Move on. Move on. Mighty in battle. Verse 9. Shagadaba sendele. Le gadabasa. Please make sure your software is well. Lift up your head. He repeated it again. You gates. Even lift them up. You everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. He asked again the second time. In verse 10. The same question that he asked previously. He asked again. Who is the king of glory? Tani oba ogono. The door doesn't want to open. The spirit doesn't want to allow access. That's why I'm praying for somebody. All these prophecies your ears have heard, may you catch the fire strong enough to move the forces entering those prophecies out of the way in the name of Jesus. Who is the... Can you see? Ask him again. Now, so many church members now, because they refuse to develop spiritual muscles, are blaming their pastors. Eh? Pastor, what prophesy I could share? Eh, Pastor was okay, my marry me, marry Pastor was okay, no, she, no, she, Pastor. No, it's, it's beyond that. Even the king of glory, they ask him, Who are you? Even the king of glory, they ask him, Who are, who are you? Who are you? I need Tanya, sir. You want us to open the door? Tanya? Who are you? There are some good garments nobody has ever worn in your family before. I want you to ask you, come back, who sent to one delay, you won't want more at you all. We used to say this proverb in my town. I'm a Yoruba man. One year, Gara, Kosekini, Kolomuni, Wole, Oni Leni, Oni Bafun, Oni Leni, Oni Ba, Kokoni Joko Tereko, Okea, Yakak Barak Bele Milo. That's why you see that he'll be fortifying his foundation. Beloved, to take territories, what God will do is to give you prophecy. Grace, receive your admission into our institution. That's what God will do. It is now left to the hand of grace to now engage in battle. Uluwa, I must not be delayed. Every force, every force, every force. And I'm now saying to you that it is not only that you pray, you have to develop muscles. Because when you are praying, the forces that is behind those doors will be saying, you, you, you are saying you want to get married. Tani gone. Who are you? You are saying you want to give out to each other. Tani gone. Who are you? Now, what next do you now do? Should I should you now do? Let's go deeper. Hallelujah. How should I build spiritual muscles that can take territories as a child of God? How can I build spiritual muscles that can take territories as a child of God? How can I build spiritual muscles that can take territories as a child of God? How? We are going to look at the how. I want us to answer the how in this service. You know, it's just like in the military. We have, my school is here with us. Military, paramilitary, there is what we call rank. My dad, before he retired, was a captain. So anytime I'm, I follow him and we're going to the officer's mess, most, mostly on Saturdays, you just put me in the car. At the officer's mess, they go to take pepper soup and take drinks. So if we are going there, he's on, a, on his uniform, he will, not just, he will make sure he doesn't put up his, in his uh, cap. Is it cap you call it? Headgear, okay? 
Now, once we, you know, three stars, once we drive to the gate of the barracks, you just begin to hear, Shonsa! 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 He just begin to tell them, easy. Easy. And doors will be open. Now, most of the people that say, Shonsa! Senior him in age. But in that realm, eh, it is not age that counts. It is rank. Most of those people that are saying Shonsa, they are more lanky than him. Which means they are more robust. In size, they are bigger than him. But it is not size that counts at that realm. It is rank. I now notice that when we now get to um, the barracks, we get to the officer's mess. I now notice that even my own father, we now meet some people and still say, Monsa. You know, in the military, there's no afternoon. If you meet your boss in the afternoon, it's Monsa. If you meet your boss in the night, it's Monsa. So I now notice that my own dad too will say, Monsa. And you hear, Afo, easy. Afo, easy. Then when I look at the shoulders of those people, I will see that they don't have three stars. They either have an eagle, that's a major, or an eagle and a star, that's a colonel. So when I ask questions, my dad will say, they are my seniors. Now, some of them are younger to him in age. Now, can I tell you one truth? Age has nothing to do with spiritual warfare. Did you hear me? Which means the spirits behind people's condition does not bow to age. Now, I also discovered that in the realm of the spirit, hear me, you know what counts in the realm of the spirit is what I call rank. Let's look at how to build it. I'll tell you four things and we close in the service as time permits. I wrote here, number one, how can you build spiritual muscles? Number one, the moment you become born again, begin to build your understanding in God's word. Build your what? Understanding. You know what determines how strong you will be spiritually? Your level of understanding in the word. Now, I learned something. My mom was an evangelist before she died. But do you know I discovered that in their days, they could pray. Yeah, ka, 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 ka. Ah, if my mother is praying, I don't like calling her on phone. If she starts praying, all my uh, air time will get finished. But do you know what I discovered about their own time, their generation, is that they could pray, but they don't have knowledge of scriptures. I'm telling you, go and ask some of you, some of your elderly parents. They are good in prayer. Three hours they could still be praying. But they don't have knowledge. When you say knowledge of the word, more on it. That's why you see that the battles that are not supposed to kill them are the things that kill them. The devil does not have respect for your prayer life. Obag badu are ten hours. You know what the devil has respect for? It's for your level of knowledge in the word. You read the Bible, you understand it, and you practice it. Now look up, look up. I will show you some things now to show you level of understanding. Do you know that if maybe mistakenly you did something that is wrong as a child of God and you say, ah, 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 I'm not supposed to get angry like that. Ah, I was not supposed to fight that person. Ah, I was not supposed to respond that rude to that person. 
Do you get what you're saying? You know, you now begin to feel that guilt that, ah, I have sinned against God. Do you know that most times when you kneel down to pray, to ask God for mercy, Lord, please forgive me. I was not supposed to do what I did. Do you know that even after you have prayed, that guilt is still in your heart? Do you notice that? Yes. It takes the knowledge of the word. A person that does not understand will still confess that same sin 10 times if he's praying 10 times. You don't understand me. <laughs> but for a person that has grown in the knowledge of the word, he knows that I have asked God for mercy, that is gone. Even if somebody begins to condemn you tomorrow, you say you are condemning me based on my past. I and God, we have one, we have settled. Say knowledge. Are you sure I'm flowing? That was, this was how God used me to deliver a whole congregation. Pastors, we keep telling them, that you are eating in the dream, they are bringing battles into your life. I now shared one experience. Me too, I used to eat in the dream so well. And anytime I finish eating the dream, I will sit down in the church and, or at home, I will be crying. And mostly, I discovered that it is the time I fast and pray that these things used to happen. So one day, while I was crying, the Lord, of, the Lord now showed me Mark chapter 16. The Bible says to them that believe, even if they eat deadly poison, it will not harm them. And the Spirit of God said, do you not believe? I said, I believe. If you eat deadly things, it will not harm you. Then why are you crying? I said, eh. So after that day, I got the same dream again. I ate in the dream and I woke up. I said, Father, I thank you because I know that I believe. And what I've eaten will not harm me. Fake all the glory in Jesus' name. And I did not allow it to make me feel bad or sorrow anymore. Do you know that? That was how I did not know how it stopped. Knowledge in the word. For instance, I'm showing you another example again. A person that understands knows that we walk with God by faith, not by what? Not by sight. Now you have a headache. And you say, Lord, in the name of Jesus... I minister to this headache. Get out in Jesus' name. A Christian that have understanding that we walk with God by faith, not by sight, the moment he has prayed, will believe he's healed. Even when he still have the headache. Now, what is faith? Evidence of things so far, assurance of things not seen. You didn't see it, but you believe it's there. But the Christian that does not have understanding, he's just a Christian. He does not have understanding. Even after he has prayed, the headache is still there. He may see another pastor. If I just school, please lay hand on my head. He will pray. It's like this man don't have anointing. Uh, Brother G, please lay hand on my head. After praying, the symptom is still there. It's like Brother G doesn't have anointing. Mama, please lay hand on my head. Are you getting what I'm saying? The first thing to do as a Christian to grow spiritual muscles is to sit down, study the word of God, and gain understanding. That's what so many Christians are not doing. They are not growing in the knowledge of the word. See how we grow. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I wrote here, word-based believers fight with strange courage because they have the understanding of their kingdom rights. That's why you see, if you see a, a Christian that knows the word of God, you see that their courage is always different. They fight from the point of understanding. So if you must grow muscles, listen, spend time with the word. Study your Bible very well. Gain understanding. If you gain understanding, you will know how to deal with the devil. You will know how to relate with God. And you will know how spiritual things operate. Say I hear. That's the first thing. In Matthew chapter 4. See how our Lord Jesus took the entire heart from Satan. Now, Satan came to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you are the, if, if, uh, uh, you are the son of God, why not turn stone to bread? Jesus knew that it is not until I turn stone to bread before I become son of God. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh from the mouth of the Father. The devil said, this one knows what? The scripture. Study your Bible. That's where you can grow muscles. Now, when the devil sees a Christian that understands the Bible, he's afraid. 
Number two, how to build spiritual muscles. Number two, are you set? Abstain from any form of sin so that the devil will not have a hole on the edge of the protection around your life. Now, there's what we call an edge of protection around every believer. Every Christian has it. The moment you are born again, there is a protection around your life. The moment you are born again, there's protection around your life. The only thing that can put a hole in that protection around your life is sin. So every single time you are going into sin, hear me, you are creating a hole for the devil to push his arrows in. At times he uses that hole to push the arrow of sickness. At times he uses that hole to push the arrow of disease. That's why I always tell children of God, I see, see, this sin that you have just fallen into, yes, you will repent, God will forgive you. But at times you don't know what the devil has used it to plant in your life. Because most times this seed will not show until it begins to grow. At times it takes 20 years. Now, that's why, make up your mind. You want to take territories this year, don't allow sin. Make up your mind that you will live the life of God. Though it's not easy to live the life of God, it takes extra determination. And just like I always say, it is determination that activates the grace of God to work in our lives. The devil is an accuser of brethren. Once the devil finds out that he does not have a hole uh, in, in your edge, he will have respect for you. Once the devil finds out that he does not have a hole on your edge, he respects you. But once the devil finds out that uh, uh, I can get way, there's gateway into this man's life, I will get him, I can get him, he will be passing through that place to enter into the person's life in order to torment him. Live the life of God. When those sons of Skiphas were saying, you demon in charge of this man, get out. The devil said, ah, ah, he shall ruin. He's not somebody like you. Just like the movie we, we you know, we watched one film at Shiloh yesterday. When the pastor was telling the spirit, get out, get out. Said, ah. The woman responded, you can't drive me out. And it's true. So many Christians does not have the audacity. To say, I bind you, Satan. Satan won't listen. You know, your pastor used to be a deliverance minister. In deliverance, there are several cases we have seen. I remember one case like that. I sent some people to go and pray for the lady. As they got, they were coming. I didn't know those people deep at that time. They were coming from far. The spirit in the lady started speaking. Pastor Tiran won't come. Pastor is sending some people to come and cast me out, but won't kill me. Won't take potu, come lock posse. Ah. And as my people got there, I was not uh, there that time. We had a program. I was tired. I didn't go out. It was around 11 p.m. So I sent them. They said as they got there, the spirit said, Ah, hey, you no know, no, you are the ones they have sent. He said the spirit even mentioned their title. Hey, yeah, lagbaja. Let's <laughs> to them. Hey, So they came back. Before they came back, the, the, the person that led the team said he got angry. He was looking at the lady because the lady in the, in the physical was younger to him. He said, He slapped her. We didn't share. <laughs> He said, but the spirit said, you, you can't cast me out. You are too small. So they came back and told me. Now, by the time they told me, pastor, what do we do? I said, I don't have the time now. Whatever spirit that is there, let him be there. By tomorrow, I will go. So by the second day, I told them to go and bring her. Beloved, as they got to the church, she saw me. She screamed. Ah, you know, you know, you know, she started crying. Hey, Joe, hey, Joe, hey, my daddy, hey, my. Listen, listen, listen. 
You can hide your sin from man. You can't hide it from the devil. You know why you can't hide from the devil? Sin is the uh, sensor that the devil's remote control responds to. You know that thing that you call remote is a sensor that is connecting it together. The sensor that connects the devil with man is sin. So wherever he sees sin, his magnet will show him that person is adorable. That's why don't allow sin. Make up your mind this year that anything that is called next sin, sin you, will, you will flee from it. And the more you abstain from sin, the more he respects you. It's just like a natural thing. You are a thief and you now arrest another thief. And the thief knows that you are a thief. And you are saying, well, my tash here. What will he say? Because he will enjoy your tash here. And what do you think will happen to them? Instantly you will share my bachelor, my bachelor job. So abstain from sin as uh, you develop spiritual muscles. Let's look at number three. Number three, in developing spiritual muscle, hear me. Develop a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit so as to know the winning strategy for every battle that faces you. What's number three? Develop a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit so as to, to know the winning strategy for every battle. Now, relationship with the Holy Spirit is another thing you can do. To, it's another muscle you must develop. Every battle you face has a strategy. I come again. Every battle you face has a strategy that will overcome it. But if you don't develop relationship with the Holy Spirit, how will you know? I wrote some examples here. When the river was bitter, God said to Moses, pick that piece of wood. Put it in it. And what will happen? The water became sweet. The Bible makes us so know again here. When they got to the front of the Red Sea, the Holy Spirit said to, to Moses, stretch forth the rod. He stretched forth the rod, the sea parted. Now, another battle again. You know, when they, it, it's plenty just like that. It keeps, keeps going. And I've taught you here several, I think I spent almost three months last year to teach you on how to hear God. Spend time. Develop that relationship more. I always tell you that if you, if you are full of yourself, Holy Ghost won't speak to you. Because the number one set of people that the Holy Spirit can never relate with are the proud set of people. Everybody one that believes I know what to do. I don't need to pray about anything. I know what to do. I don't need to seek God's face over anything. I know what to do. I don't need to be calm. God won't speak to you. But the number one kind of people that the Holy Ghost wants to speak to are those who are always hungry in their spirit for God. You say, Lord, what do you have to say over this decision? What should I do, Lord? That's why the Bible says, blessed are those who, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They are those that will be filled. Let's take number four. Number four. How do you build your spiritual muscles? Number four. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting will make you look more like God. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting will make you look more like God. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting will make you look more like God. Now, don't forget, you start the foundation with knowledge of the word. You abstain from sin. You listen to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Then number four, you develop a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. You know why you will look like God when you are always praying and fasting? See, every single time you say, Father, in Jesus' name, you appear in God's presence. And you know, if you are always conversant in God's presence, you are always coming to God's presence, his presence will begin to rub on you. It will get to a point you begin to look like him. Look at when Moses came down from the mountain. He spent only 40 days with God. The Bible says as he came down, people could not look at his face. They couldn't behold his eyes. So they had to go and make a shield. They went to make a shield. They put it on Moses' face. Because when they look at him, they couldn't behold. His face was glittering. You 
don't have to wait until the church put fasting. Yeah, is okay. Can't do a 21 days in January. Don't wait for that. Develop a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. As a Christian, at least you should have okay reju one day in a week that you should fast and pray about yourself. See, I hear. I didn't hear you. The more you come to his presence in prayer and fasting, the more you, you look like him among men. You will always appear as a lion spiritually. Where you have a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. You will always have, every single time you appear, the devil sees a lion. That's how to take territories. That's how to develop muscles. Now, you don't forget, the reason why your own prayer life will be different is because you have understanding of the word of God. I was telling my wife this morning, I was, we, we, she said, after the prayer yesterday, ah, she was very strong. I just said, I'm, after the prayer I was strong. I said, because prayer is work. You know, we spent three hours yesterday praying. Four to seven. She was in the corner there praying. I was here on the altar praying. Everybody in school was somewhere praying. Pastor Michael, you know, everybody was, everybody was scattered. We were praying for, by the time we finished, we were tired. But beloved, she woke up from a very powerful revelation this morning. Don't joke with your prayer life. It is not every door that opens by natural key. Because there are forces. If you don't know, forces, wow. I don't want to be telling you things that will be making you afraid. But will I tell you the case of a family like that? A family close, close to us. All their men, not one has a child. The first one, he was writing an exam, mechanical engineer, University of Ife, final year student. Was writing the final paper when he screamed, Yay! And he has not gone back to finish it today. Something of over 20 years ago. There are forces. And it's not yet married to today. The second one, too, God born again. But God born again in a church where the only thing they teach them is heaven. Heavenly conscious, utterly useless. He too didn't get married until he has got into a very, 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 very mature old age. Got married to another of his mates. His sister too that I've got, you know, another of his mates. And funny enough, they live apart. It's like the brother is living in Lagos and the lady is living in Abuja. And they meet once a while. And they want to have a child. I want parents to, I want get. Sometimes I say, ah, ah, I'm too damn fair, Adura. I talk to the car to fear, Adura. But if you don't get here, you can all roll on to one fee, to one new year, Jinle. Lati ma fi, ti le ni, ni o jeki, agbara, Adura, kuri li, honey, no, aye, yi, won. But you, in this generation, you know scripture. You have access to preachers that are teaching you scriptures. Concentrate. Develop a prayer life. Stop thinking that good things come easy. Good things don't come easy. I say again, good things don't come easy. You will break through. This year you will you will gain territories. Now don't forget, I've told you gaining territory is not only about geographical location, it's advancement. To be I told you the story of how one, one a brother. I've tried everything to help him travel. Because he kept telling me, sir, God said, my wife is not in Nigeria. My wife is abroad. My wife is not in Nigeria. Uh, all, 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 all
and I decided to help him. But while we are busy fasting and praying, you know what he will do? He will go and, is this altar? He will go and stay at this corner. He will be eating beans and bread. So one day I came to the altar to pray. Ah, ah, ah. I was also looking, ah, bro, angel. Eh, uh, only, eh, uh, pastor, pastor, you know, yeah. In, ah, ah. I think I will let him get what bread. Eh, eh, boom, she's my long line, yeah, la, la, Ah, eh, me there, you got away. Fung, gwa, ye, ye. So, be, she's my, you're your bread out of one, eh, eh, pastor, can you, is it? Okay, I weigh, eh, oh, what's your mama, you push your man, show, too much, baba, oh, yeah, come, I come, I come, I come, I come, Continue. Will you develop nozzles? Sir, can I tell you this truth? If it is easy for two plus two to be four, everybody will get four. If it is easy for two plus two to be four, eh, everybody will be getting the answer. Accurately, yes. But there are, there are four sisters who doesn't want two plus two to be four. And do you know that there are some people who do two plus two and get 22? And the reason why you need to develop muscles, hear me, is because we are living in an envious environment. You had that, that film we watched yesterday. Eh? The woman said what got her angry that made her to be killing her own children is because she wants to deal with her husband. Imagine. But I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus, the wicked will not prevail over you. This year you will capture new territories. This year you will move forward. The wicked will not rejoice over you. But see, be committed to developing your what? Spiritual muscles. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet.